Section 8.2, graphs of polar equations. So we'll get to practice plotting while we do the graphs a little more in case you need more practice from 8.1. So example one, sketch the curve where r equals two. So this is kind of like when we have like y equals a number, right? x could be anything. So in this case, theta can be anything. So any angle works. Uh, we just specifically have to go two from the origin. So one, two. So it just makes a circle with radius two. Isn't this easier um, than the equations we saw earlier? Circles were x squared plus y squared and then would be two squared here for r squared. So this is gonna allow us to do things with circular shapes with easier equations. So r equals a will always be a circle centered at the origin. And a radius of r. And I'm gonna say absolute value of r. Because if I wrote r equals negative 2, we'd get the same shape because we're just reflecting off of all the angles. Let's look at theta equals a number. So now the radius can be anything. So let's go to, let's find pi over 6. That would be this angle right here. So any radius works, even decimal radiuses. So it'll be that entire line. And then we may remember those negative radiuses get reflected to the other side. So it actually includes this angle as well. And that is when we have theta equals of angle. So theta equals theta zero will be a line at that angle. Um, sometimes it's called a radial line. All right, let's try one more complicated, slightly more complicated one in this section, and we'll do more later. So example three, graph the polar equation r equals one plus cosine theta. So this one's a little more complicated. So we're gonna get some practice with our trig. So I recommend, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and plug in all the numbers. Um, why don't you pause the video and plug in all the angles in for theta. So one plus cosine zero, one plus cosine pi over four all the way down to two pi. Um, so why don't you pause the video so you can get some practice with your trig and then unpause once you've filled out the table. So I'm just gonna start filling it in and then I'll talk you through it, hoping that you're just checking your answers and not doing them with me. All right, so you're back because you already finished this. Um, so cosine of zero was one, right? So we get one plus one or two. Next we have cosine of pi over four, which is one plus root two over two. And then because we're gonna graph, we'll estimate these, just so we can get an estimate of where it's at. Normally I wouldn't do this. But you know, we wanna know, is it two, is it three, right? Where exactly is it? So it's about 1.7. So that tells us it'll be like in between one and two. So that'll help us with graphing. Cosine of pi over two is zero, so one plus zero or one. Um, three pi over four was one minus root two over two, because it was a negative. So let's also estimate that just to help us graph. This will all make sense. We're just finding a couple points like we did in our algebra classes. And we'll see what kind of graph it makes. So it's approximately 0.29. Um, cosine of pi, that was negative one. So that's zero, one minus one. 5 pi over 4 is 1 minus root 2 over 2. 
So that was that 0.29 again. 3 pi over 2, hopefully we got 0. I'm using the unit circle to do all this. And then we get 1 plus root 2 over 2, or we get that 1.7 again, and then we get 1 plus 1 or 2 again. All right, so let's see what the heck is going on. And then hopefully we can try to make a shape out of this. And then I'll give you a little bit more guidance for the next one. So let's see. Angle 0, radius of 2. So we go to 0, which is right here. And we go out to the second radius. Um, pi over 4 and 1.7. So pi over 4 is this angle. And then 1.7 we're just going to have to estimate. So 1.7 would maybe be right there. And then pi over 2 would be at 1, so we go up to pi over 2, and we go out to radius 1. And so what this graph is doing, it makes circular motions, so it's not making like lines. It's going to make circular motions between these. So we'll connect these as we get to the end. And we'll have more guidance for the next graph now that we've seen one. Um, let's get a new color. Um, for pi, 3 pi over 4, which is right here, we get 0.29, so that'll just be really close to the center. Take your time with plotting, 0.29 right there. So again, we're making circular motion. Um, and then we go to zero, so it really doesn't matter the angle. It's always remember a radius of zero is always in the center, so that's gonna like bring us back to the center. So it's kind of making like a little spiral so far, but it, we'll see what happens after. And then at five pi over four, it looks like it goes back out to two nine. So pi over four would be five pi over four is this angle, and it's just really close. And then we go back to 3 pi over 2 and 1. So 3 pi over 2 is this angle. And we go out to 1. All right, plotting is taking a while, right? Because we're looking at like kind of a whole new world. <laughs> um, and then we go to 7 pi over 4 and we get 1.7. So 7 pi over 4 is here. 1, 2, so maybe in between 1 and 2. And then we finally end back where we started, 2 pi and 2. And so it makes this spiral. So it's circular motion, and it makes kind of a heart-like shape. What do you think? So let's talk about what shape this is. This is called a cardioid. So we're going to use this for guidance, so that way we know when we get this form, we know we'll get this shape, so maybe we can plot a few less points. And then just be familiar that this is the shape we're going to find. So it's called a cardioid. It always has the form of um, R equals A plus or minus A times cosine or sine of theta. So the key is, is that this A is the same value. So in this example above, we had a 1. They both had a 1 coefficient. So they'll always make a cardioid. It just kind of changes direction depending on if it's sine or cosine and plus or minus. So for 1 plus sign, we have this upside down heart, and 1 minus sign, we have a right side up heart. You'll notice the, the sign ones are reflective about the y-axis. Uh, but if you plot a couple points, you can find this without remembering this. So you don't have to memorize the symmetry, um, but maybe be familiar that this shape, this pattern makes a cardioid, and so plot a couple points and it'll help you with direction. And then we'll see the cosine ones are sideways. So 1 plus cosine is bigger on the right side, and 1 minus cosine is bigger on the left side, and they're reflected about the x-axis. All right, the symmetry is about the x-axis. So that's a cardioid. So if you see something like r equals 2 plus 2 cosine theta, um, it'll look something like this, right? You might plot a couple points to figure out how far out it goes and what direction it goes. But that's a cardioid. It could be subtraction as well. So r equals 3 minus 3 sine theta would make a cardioid. 
So the trick is to maybe be familiar with the base shape. So we'll look for patterns and find the base shape, and then we will plot a couple points.